We also want to walk through what that event upload process looks like. So once more, you'll hover over that events word at the top, the top bar there, and then you'll see that drop down menu come down. From here, you'll select that first option. So submit your 2024 event. We'll click there and that'll bring you to the submission form. So we'll give that a second to load and then walk through the different pieces here, which should be pretty straightforward. You'll note that uh, uh, those descriptions or boxes marked with an asterisk are required. So your event submission might fail if one of those boxes is left open. Um, I would recommend reading through it really quickly, making sure you're prepared with that information. A lot of times our partners um, or our staff will create a document with all of the information written out. So you can just copy and paste the information. You can also just type it out as you go. Um, but I would recommend coming prepared with all of the necessary information, as well as the images that you will be posting, all of which you'll want to have as JPEG files. So if they aren't already, you can use the Paint app or tool on your desktop or laptop to convert them into JPEG images. All right, so for today, I'm gonna to walk you through an event upload for one of our signature programming events, which is a film screening of our newest Monarcas film coming this Latino Conservation Week in 2024. We're gonna start with the title here. So you'll either copy or type in the title of your event, paste it right into that box, You'll notice that when I click in that box, it will then become outlined by a little blue shadow. That indicates that you are actively editing that box, you're actively typing in it. To save the response that you add in there, to save that text, you wanna make sure that you actually click outside of that blue box. That's gonna save your information in there and you'll see that that gets rid of that blue box and turns it back into that gray box from the beginning. So you'll add your title, again, click out of that box to save that response and then scroll down for the next step. You'll want to select your type of event. Again, that's whether it's in-person, virtual, or maybe it's an offering of both. This In this specific case, it is an in-person event. So again, you'll see that blue box, select your response, click outside of the box to save that response. And then we can move on to event hosts. In this case, it's Hispanic Access Foundation, again, as part of our signature programming. And we'll also be adding in the New England Aquarium who is helping us host the event. You'll see that blue box pop up once more as you start typing in there, add in your response. Once more, you'll click outside of that box to save that response and scroll down to the next piece here. The next piece is your event image. You'll notice there are a few stipulations to what that upload looks like. Again, only JPEG files are accepted. So if you need to convert that image, please do so ahead of your upload. Um, and then you'll want to make sure that the sizing is appropriate as well. You can choose file, browse your files, select the image that you want to be the thumbnail associated with that event listing. And I uploaded the PNG file. You'll see that that'll actually give me a failure if I keep that one. So we're going to, again, double check that you've got the JPEG file. You'll see the JPG there at the end of that. Again, double check to make sure that that is the appropriate file type. You'll click out of it and scroll down once more. Your event description is also marked by an asterisk. So we'll want to make sure that we fill that part out to its completed form. Here is also where you'll want to include any registration links for your event or important information on what participants can expect in the programming. Again, you can either paste that or type it out as you go. Um, either way, you'll want to make sure that you click outside of that box once more to save that information before you scroll down. Right, so your event start date and event end date. In this case, our screening is going to be on September 19th. So we'll click that box. You'll see that little um, red circle with the line cross through pop up. That's just your cursor. So you can go ahead, click that box and you'll see a little calendar pop up. From here, you'll click the start date. You'll see it turn orange, make that click. You see that blue box once more on that start date. So again, to save that date, you'll want to click outside of the box. That's how you know that it's been saved. 
And then in the event date, you'll do the same thing. Excuse me for this, the end date. So you'll scroll down, hit that date, in this case, the 19th. Again, you'll see that blue box pop up. You would want to click outside of that box to save that date. Otherwise, sometimes it does cause some issues um, in the processing stage, and you'll, you'll end up with some dates that aren't that date. So very important step is to make sure it saves by clicking outside of the box. In this case, the event start time and event end time will be 5 to 8 p.m. Eastern. So same thing here. This time you can just type it in. We've got 5 p.m. Eastern. Click outside to save that response, and it'll end at 8 p.m. We click outside to save that response, and we can scroll back down. All right, so for our event location, that'll be the name of the park or building or wherever it is that you're hosting your event. We'll drop that in there. And then we do want to include the address. And this is important for a few reasons, um, including to be able to direct participants to the right place, click outside to save. But this is also the portion that drops that marker on the event map. So we want to make sure that we fill that out appropriately so we get the right marker dropped in the right spot. It's going to be in Boston this year. We click outside of that box. Our state, you've got a drop down menu available so you can scroll down, select the state. Again, very important for that event map. You see that every time you see that blue box, you wanna make sure to click outside of it to save that, that entry or that response. And that zip code, of course, just as important. All right. We click outside to keep going. This event is open to the public and there is no cost to the event. So we'll want to write free. If there is a cost, you'll want to type in that cost there. Again, save that response by clicking outside of the box. You have the opportunity to attach a few sponsor logos as well. Um, again, these should be JPEG format. So if you don't have the JPEG, you can convert it using the paint tool on your computer or another application or tool that you might have available to you. But double check those are JPEG files. Click file, giving you the opportunity to browse through uh, your saved files and folders. Here, we're going to add the New England Aquarium logo. You will need to add them one at a time. So once you add one, let it upload. You can click add another logo and you have the opportunity to add up to five here. So once more, we'll Browse our files, finding the right JPEG file this time, adding it in there, clicking outside. Be mindful to avoid clicking that choose file again like I just did. Click outside to save responses and scroll down. So the last part here is who our public contact for more details would be. And so in this case, it'll be our riverways and our waterway and rivers manager, excuse me. I'm going to copy her name, paste it in here as well. Oh, we're going to try that again. Here we go. Again, we'll click outside of that blue box to save the response. Oops, and you'll actually see that I just made a mistake here. So we're gonna have a different box for the first name and a different box for the last name. We click outside to save that response. We'll type in that email address here. Organization, so we know who that contact is representing. In this case, it'll be Hispanic Access Foundation. We click outside of that box once more. And your phone number as well is important if there's a phone number for people um, who have questions about the event, we'll want to make sure that we include that as well. Again, paste it or type it in. Click outside of that box to save that response. Um, this final box is not a required box, so if you're not sure, you're welcome to leave it blank. But for our internal planning purposes, it won't be shared publicly. Um, we are hoping to get an estimated attendance number from you. That just helps when it comes time to do our evaluation of Latino Conservation Week. So again, if you have an estimate, you can add it there. We save by clicking outside of that blue box. Um, if you don't have an estimate or would rather not share, that's quite all right. You can leave that one blank. Um, very important step here, you want to make sure you do your CAPTCHA check. So we're going to check that we are not robots uploading this event. Again, I always click outside of it, even though it's not blue, just for good measure here. 
do a quick scroll, making sure that we added everything we need to. And it looks like our second logo didn't get added. So um, thankfully we did that scroll and we can make sure to add it here now. There you go, you'll see that saved it there now as well. We'll finish out our scroll here, making sure that we didn't leave anything blank, double checking that those event dates saved appropriately. We've got that registration link. It looks like our event image also disappeared. So we'll wanna again, double check, make sure it's there. All right, here we go. Looks like everything is noted, everything is filled out. So we'll scroll all the way down once more. We'll hit send, we'll let it process. And there you go. You should get the thank you for your submission and note. Um, and you should also receive an email letting you know that that response has been received. After that, you'll be able to go back to that events page. You can filter by state and look for your event that way. If there are any edits that need to be made to your entry, you can reach out to our Latino Conservation Week program manager, Jessica Godinez, or Evelyn Ramirez on our communication team, and you'll get those email addresses in that response to your email as well. Um, so here, if you wanna double check to see it added, and sometimes it does take a few minutes. So if you don't see it right away, it might just be that it hasn't fully processed or uploaded, but you can double check. By filtering by that state, you'll see that uploaded there just fine with that image and the description. You can click it again to see that full event description. There you go. And that's it.